I think very few people uh, generally in the news are aware of um, how many mini and mass extinctions there have been on this planet already and what the common link with those are. Um, maybe you could start by just giving us a brief overview of, of that story. Well, I like to think of carbon dioxide, CO2, as the most dangerous molecule ever produced after the Big Bang. Uh, carbon, of course, comes out of supernova. CO2, just that little bitty thing. And what is, I was telling my class yesterday, I'm teaching 100 undergrads. In this room, we're breathing all these gas molecules. And let's say, let's take a million of the gas molecules. And out of that million, there are about 400 or 410, depending on how you do it, that are CO2, carbon dioxide. It doesn't sound if like we that were many. just double, just double. Okay, if there are 800 of those CO2 molecules, uh, industrialized life, industrialized civilization, everything we know and take for granted right now are going to be gone relatively quickly. CO2, a little tiny bit of CO2 is absolutely necessary. Without any CO2, the whole planet would be frozen. So we need some of those 400, but we don't need 800 and we don't need 1200. And every time we've gone from the levels we're at now up to a thousand even has created a mass extinction. So what we're doing, of course, is every time we get in the car, just putting more of those CO2s into the atmosphere. And if this isn't collective, suicide by homo sapiens i don't know what is so how what was the mechanism of these prior mass extinctions well we've got an awful lot of record from the fossils that tell us the good and the bad and everything else uh one of the funny things that strikes me is that my my partner and friend don brownlee we wrote the book rare earth don thinks and laughs a lot about what we're calling what is an earth-like planet and what earth like to us is the climate that lets us be comfortable and go to the beach and hang out and not wear a shirt and not have to wear long johns but on the other hand not have to be so hot that we are dying as many of us did in seattle washington last june the number of humans who died skyrocketed during the heat. And we've seen this over and over in France and Germany and every place in Europe where we had excessive heat. Uh, older people die and they die quickly. We are just not set up for the really hot days. And yet that's really what we're heading for. And in the deep past, when we've had really spiking CO2, and it comes from in the past volcanoes, volcanic activity, just normal earth processes are always pumping CO2 into the atmosphere. So if we could just turn off the volcanoes now, we could drive all the SUVs we want, no problem. Unfortunately, you can't turn off the volcanoes. We're always going to get that stuff. So we're adding to something that is already at a very high level. So the um, can you briefly go through the, the five previous mass extinctions in like a, a few sentences each? Sure, but there are a lot more than five, and that keeps sort of always getting me a little cranky. Uh, we talk about five mass extinctions in the time of animals, but you know well, Nate, that life on this planet goes back almost four billion years. Animals have been around just about a little more than a half billion of that four billion. There have been 10 or 12 mass extinctions in the time of animals, but many, many more prior to that. So mass can, extinctions are things that have happened over and over. Can you see this? Your stromatolite? These are uh, stromatolites. That stromatolite from your Two, property? 2.3 billion uh, years old. This was the first creator of, of oxygen, and they caused the, uh, the, the first mass extinction um, from Absolutely. too much oxygen as a byproduct, which ended up enabling life for the rest of us. Yeah, well, it just everything is such a delicate balance in terms of the gas that we have in the atmosphere and how we as living organisms need to be in balance with not just atmospheric CO2, but temperature, pH, all that stuff. And so in the past, when things go out of whack and the Earth seems to have a way of doing that. What a great deal of magma, a lot of lava pours up through the Earth. We get extra CO2. So we have really good models from deep time. What happens if in a short period of time you pump the atmosphere full of CO2? And what happens is mass extinction. 
And what is the usual mechanism of that mass extinction, historically? Yeah, there's a step by step process. So number one, for whatever reason, deep Mother Earth says, Oh, my God, I've got some flatulence coming. Here it goes. And there's a big fart of CO2 into the atmosphere. Everything gets really warm all over the globe. Now, the problem is that the globe doesn't quickly or even in long term heat up at the same temperatures everywhere. For instance, for all the CO2 we're putting in the atmosphere now, the tropics, the Amazon, the places on the equator, they're not getting much hotter. They've been hot, they are hot, they stay hot. And there's something about the physics of atmospheric heating that I don't understand, but people do very well. Instead, the poles get way hotter than they were. The, 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 the equator doesn't. So what happens is the poles, the high latitudes get hotter and hotter and hotter. The mid latitudes and the equator stay the same. So you're reducing the heat differential between the poles and the equator. When you do that, you slow down currents. Ocean currents slow down. Wind currents slow down, wind velocities slow down, everything gets more and more stagnant. The oceans, which are right now very oxygenated because of all the vigorous current activity, they stop being this nice swirling mix of water. Our global ocean goes from someplace where you can sail America's Cups, big sailboats, to someplace where you would just sit on a raft in a pond and all beneath you, you're getting this hotter and hotter swamp. Swamps are places with a lot of nasty, toxic aspects to them. In the past, that's what happened to our oceans. Swamps weren't the little thing behind your house. Swamps became all the ocean. And out of them comes a lot of other kinds of gas, most dangerously carbon dioxide. I mean, sorry, uh, hydrogen sulfide. When, when was the last time that we had such a slow moving swampy ocean without the circulation type that we have now well the last most devastating time is actually during the jurassic we had a number of these things and in the triassic and the mesozoic but even the, the cretaceous and then the the most recent of all was something called the paleocene eocene thermal maximum the petm and that too is where the temperature of the earth went up i think it's six or seven to eight degrees centigrade over a few hundreds of thousands to a million years so that six or seven is a pretty small number until you look at global temperatures it's a catastrophic number. There was no ice on this planet, even in the far north and the far south during that. No ice. So, Nate, there's no glaciers. There's no floating ice. Sea level is a couple hundred feet higher than now. And the whole world is a steaming, miasmic jungle. So that really is what we're aiming back towards, because we are now heading very quickly towards the CO2 that led to that. So if we get up to 1,000 ppm, we're right back there. We're right back at PETM times, which was 55 million years ago. 